My name is Tatiana, and I'm Principal Scientist in Vitro Neuroscience here at Signature Discovery. I invite you today to join me over the coming weeks, where I will discuss you how to measure mitochondrial function. We will explore the benefits of measuring the function of this organelle. And uh, of course, I will share with you some internal data as well. In this video, I will explore a little bit of how we can measure mitochondrial dynamics and biogenesis and uh, in different models using in vitro or ex vivo models and the relevance of such analysis. So uh, as I mentioned before, to have a completely and general idea of how mitochondria function or how mitochondria is working, we have to have different approaches. Uh, and of course, if you can do this simultaneously, it's even better. So mitochondria are very uh, cap capable of adapting organelles, meaning like the number or the shape and the size of the mitochondria can change according to the energetic needs of the cells. Uh, but actually what I mean about uh, changing shapes and changing formats. So just changing shapes and formats, we, uh, we mention and we uh, classify as what we call mitochondrial dynamics. So mitochondria can actually be split into different little mitochondria and, uh, and this is called mitochondria fission. This uh, fission of mitochondria in uh, a lot of more smallest mitochondria is really important to remove all this damage or dysfunction organelles through a process that we call autophagy. So in this case specifically, when we have mitochondria fission to be degraded through autophagy, we call mitophagy. There is another process called mitochondrial fusion that is completely the opposite. So actually we have a lot of different mitochondria that can fuse and form a bigger organelle. Uh, the advantage of this uh, process is actually the mix of genetic material and protein as well. And usually it just helps to boost mitochondrial energy. Uh, the four abnormalities in mitochondrial dynamics, meaning just fission and fusion process, can lead to the accumulation of damaged mitochondria, and the forages can also increase oxidative stress and narrow the damage and cell death. Mitochondrial biogenesis, on the other hand, is defined by an increase in the number, in the content of mitochondria within the cells. This is very important, again, if we think about this adaptability of mitochondria regarding energy demand. So if the cells are struggling and for whatever reason need more energy, mitochondria can actually increase its number. And this is how we call mitochondrial biogenesis. So if we reduce mitochondrial biogenesis, this can actually compromise the cell's ability to replace damaged mitochondria. So we can degrade this mitochondria that was fixed, but if we cannot increase the number of mitochondria um, afterwards, we, can actually, we cannot actually compensate the energy level. Consequently, the investigation of mitochondrial dynamics and biogenesis becomes really crucial when we're uh, talking about neurodegeneration. Here at Signature, we measure mitochondrial dynamics and biogenesis uh, through alterations in the transcription of some of the genes related to this process by real-time PCR. So some of these genes uh, are PGC1-alpha, that is known as a master regulator of mitochondrial bio biogenesis, TIFAM, that is a transcription factor of mitochondria, and NRF1, that is one of the transcription factors related to increase the number of proteins in the mitochondria chain that will be responsible for the transport of electrons and protons keeping energy production. There is another transcription factor called NRF2 or NFE2L2 uh, that is really important to keep antioxidant defense. So bringing back the oxidative stress and how we measure kinetics that I mentioned in the video before. So measuring this uh, transcription factor is really important to understand how the antioxidant levels in the cells will be. And the relevance of this NRF2 is because PGC1-alpha and NRF1 actually co-transcribe this factor. So in this figure, we can see uh, some data of neuroblastoma cells exposed to different concentrations of rotenone. And uh, we measure the changes of all these transcription factors uh, using RT-PCR or real-time PCR. So we can see here PGC1-alpha and TFAM, but we can see also transcription factors related to mitochondrial dynamics like MFN, that is mitofusing, and the fifth one, that is fission one. 
So having all these genes together, this can actually uh, lead us to understand how the mitochondria dynamics is in simultaneously to understand how the how mitochondria is uh, increasing its number in a specific model. So if you see the data, we can see that actually rotenone, regardless of the concentration, is decreasing the transcription factors uh, related to mitochondria biogenesis and mitochondria dynamics. Uh, out of curiosity here is because rotenone is actually increasing the expression of NRF2, that is the transcription factors that I mentioned before related to antioxidant. The reason that uh, there is an increase in NRF2 uh, expression can be related to the fact that the cells is trying to boost antioxidant defense in the presence of rotenone. Sometimes things that just can be translated to cell survival, but sometimes because there are so many other pathways to regulate it, even if increase in NRF2, the cell's fate is to the death. Uh, one very important point that I mentioned in the beginning of this video is like actually mitochondrial dynamics and biogenesis uh, can be measured using both in vitro uh, and ex vivo models. So here at Signature, we can also measure these processes using tissue that were homogenized with uh, using a specific protocol and measuring the transcription factors afterwards using real-time PCR. So here at Signature, we use automation to uh, not only um, purify and obtain mRNA, but also through all the real-time um, um, reaction per se. So we use automated echo liquid handling, we use straight four-wheel plate, and we can also um, examine the gene exp expression using two different platforms, Tacklin or Cybergrain. So in this figure, you can appreciate the changes in the transcription uh, and the gene expression in the cortex of different animal models. Uh, here we can have, we can see the tau models, control and transgenic, and uh, with around 5.6 months, and also the APP presignaline model with around eight months. So we can appreciate that there is a decrease in the PGC1 alpha expression in the tau model in comparison to its respective control. We also see a decrease in NRF1 and we don't see any changes in the NRF2 levels. So as we can uh, uh, imagine, like the changes in mitochondrial biogenesis and uh, dynamics, we related back to which animal we are talking about, which animal model we are talking about, which brain region we are talking about. And again, just come back to the idea that to understand how mitochondria is working, you have to have different approaches and do in order to have a more broad overview of how mitochondria is working. If you missed last videos from our series, please visit our website uh, to catch up on insights and to learn how we can measure mitochondria function and uh, what are the platforms available here at Signature. And please join me in the next week when I will conclude this exciting journey in mitochondria function and the relevance for it in the neuroscience field, and how we can measure some of the most relevant parameters. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Get in touch with us either in the comment section below or via our website. And of course, visit our signature website to understand more about mitochondria function and uh, the platforms available for you.